Welcome back to Educator.com. This is the lesson on human evolution. So before we talk about the details of where we came from and why, um, with human evolution, we got to talk about primates. That's our general group. So if you look at the taxonomy lesson, our order, uh, the group of living beings that we belong to based on you know similarities with looks and genes and such, we are primates. So primates originally evolved from an arboreal tree dwelling mammal 85 to 60 million years ago. And there is some debate on exactly when. Uh, if you look at the fossil evidence based on um, tree dwelling mammals that time, um, this is the range um, that uh, is pretty current. Um, so that arboreal mammal um, would have had four limbs. It would have had uh, probably a slightly longer face than the average primate. Um, I've seen images of what they think it might have looked like. It almost looked like a tree shrew. Um, but of course, a lot of changes had to happen um, to the descendants of that particular uh, mammal to get into what we now know as primates, uh, monkeys, apes, us, and the like. Typical primate characteristics, front-facing eyes. If you notice other, uh, I just, you know, scratched my eye and it's in the front of my face. Other animals, I'm sure you've noticed, sometimes have eyes on the side of their head, like a bird. And a bird will move its head from side to side so it can get a good view of, you know, everything around it. The fact that we don't have eyes on the side of our head that they're in front of our head gives binocular vision. The fact that we have overlapping visual fields and we have a better sense of depth. That's important for primates, especially swinging through the trees, knowing exactly how far away that next branch is to catch or, or whatever is very important. Um, so that's the binocular vision, also called stereoscopic vision. Most primates have color vision. The ones that are um, night dwellers, the nocturnal ones, uh, tend to not. But um, color vision, very common in primates. Opposable thumbs or toes. Some have only um, one of them being opposable like us. We have a opposable thumbs. Our big toe is not opposable. However, when you look at other primates, they can grab things with their feet as if it's a hand, and they'll hang from a branch upside down, which is much harder for a human to do. Large brains. Uh, compared to other mammals, we have a bigger brain-to-body ratio in terms of mass. Upright posture is very common. The fact that you can see a lot of uh, primates ambling around on just their hind legs and not having to, you know, put pressure always on their um, their front legs. Fewer offspring and more dependency, meaning compared to other mammals, other, uh, you know, individuals in our class, the mammalian class, we have less babies per time we mate and you get more dependency of the offspring on us. So there's a lot more maternal care that tends to happen with primates compared to uh, other mammals and certainly other vertebrates. So these things, they, they may not all be true of an individual species of primates, but these are typical characteristics. There are two major groups uh, within order primata or the order of primates. The strepsirenes, these are kind of a more ancient lineage of primates. They look um, almost more like aliens. I'm not saying they actually came from another planet, but the strepsirenes includes the lemurs, lorises, ayais, um, galagos. Um, but I have some examples here. So this particular individual here, that is an ayai from Madagascar. Um, the ayai has a very long finger on each hand. They can dig in to get insects from trees. Um, they are nocturnal. Um, so the II is um, in the same group as lorises and lemurs and um, definitely not as closely related to us as other primates. Now the tarsiers used to be considered related to them. Um, it is actually in the group haplorines, which, which is our group. Um, further evidence um, from the genetics of, of tarsiers has shown it's it's probably not as closely related to the II, even though it looks like it should be. Um, so this tarsier is also a nocturnal animal. You can see from its very large eyes. Um, but yeah, kind of an interesting looking animal there, huh? But the haplorines also includes monkeys, apes like chimpanzees and humans and, and our closer relatives. The anthropoids is a subgroup within haplorines and it basically includes all of these. 
monkeys, apes, and humans. Basically, the anthropoids are all haplorines except for tarsiers. Um, so I'm going to focus more on the anthropoids. We're getting closer into the humans. Anthropoids, slide number one. The anthropoids, our group, diverged from other primates about 35 million years ago. Um, we're going to start with the monkeys. New World monkeys, um, the ones that you would find in Central America, South America, the New World. Um, spider monkeys, howler monkeys, capuchins, and more. I'm just giving you a few examples. Uh, the spider monkey is right here. This is the spider monkey. Uh, it gets its name because look at that. Look what it can do. Uh, it's, it's tail is like a fifth limb. It's prehensile. And that's actually very common. Prehensile tails are common in New World monkeys. They don't all have them, but it's very common for them to have a tail that almost acts like another arm. Um, howler monkeys, I've seen them in person in Costa Rica. They can howl, let me tell you. And, uh, capuchins. Um, you see them in a lot of movies and TV shows. Uh, but New World monkeys, uh, the fact that monkeys exist in multiple continents shows you that this group came to be before the continents completely separated. And that's how you got them in different continents. Once the continents separated, you have isolation of those different groups. And that's how um, you get the differences occurring because of those isolated populations. Old World monkeys, Africa, Asia. This includes the macaques, baboons, colobus monkeys. No prehensile tails. They, you just don't find them. They tend to be larger as well compared to New World monkeys. And actually, back to the tails, uh, some of these monkeys don't even have a tail. And it, it is common for monkeys in general to have tails compared to apes, but um, some definite differences when it comes to tails comparing Old World and New World. So here's an example of um, a macaque monkey just chilling. Anthropoids number two. Um, you also have hominoids as a subgroup. This would be the non-monkey anthropoids. So we just talked about the anthropoids that would not be hominoids. And this actually starts to sound more like our name. We are Homo sapiens. So hominoids, uh, that homo, the root is the same, uh, meaning same as us. So the lesser apes would include gibbons and siamangs. Um, here we have uh, one of those lesser apes. Also just chilling. Uh, and then the greater apes, gorillas, orangutans, chimpanzees, and bonobos. This is a bonobo chimpanzee. Um, this kind of chimpanzee is also called the common chimpanzee. It used to be called the pygmy chimpanzee. Um, bonobos is a relative of chimpanzees that is the closest to us in terms of um, resembling us and, and acting like us. Hominins. Finally, we get into... Um, a smaller group within hominoids. This would be the hominoids that are not apes. So this is us and all of our relatives that are much closer to us in terms of genetics and um, ancestry than chimps and their ancestors. So this is humans and their extinct relatives. Um, our group hominins split off from other African apes eight to five million years ago. Uh, more fossil evidence in the future will, will allow us to pinpoint this more precisely. This used to be called hominids. So this N in older textbooks used to be uh, a D. Um, hominins is now the more acceptable term. When I took this in high school, uh, the term in, in the textbooks was hominids. Um, if you see that in other research related to this, hominids and hominins are basically the same. 